Hey guys, Dr. Rob here, and I wanted to welcome you down to my health corner where today we're going to discuss how to detoxify the adrenal glands. But before we get into adrenal detoxification, if you find that you like this information as you're listening to it, please give me a thumbs up to show that you like it and give me some support. Also, hit the notifications bell so you could always stay up to date when I do these videos, which is usually Mondays and Thursdays every single week. That's right, coming to you over a hundred times per year. And then, of course, hit the subscribe button so you can follow me and we can hang, hang, hang out. Okay, so let's get into adrenal detoxification. Now, I should say this. Today, we're going to go over the basics of adrenal detox. If you want more in-depth adrenal detoxification, watch my free webinars. Um, I do free webinars on adrenal detoxification. They are very in-depth. They're like an hour and a half of adrenal detox information. So we go really in-depth. We really cover everything. But today is certainly enough to get you started and get you on the right path. So first off, why would we really need to detox the adrenal glands? Well, in a study that was published in the Journal of Tissue Culture Association, it was found that the adrenal glands actually contain things like mercury, cadmium, cobalt, copper, and other toxins, they will actually accumulate in the adrenal tissue. Other studies have found in humans as well as in animals that these toxins can literally damage the structure, so the actual structure of the adrenal gland and will damage the function of the adrenal gland. So what does that look like when adrenal function starts to become damaged? Well, it looks like things like waking up around two or three in the morning and having difficulty falling back to sleep. It means waking up, feeling tired, hitting your snooze alarm a lot, um, needing coffee or some type of stimulant to get you going in the morning. After lunch, feeling like you're crashing and like you need to take a nap. Waking up kind of in the evening. When the adrenal function is altered, you'll get this fatigue throughout the day where the person feels at times like they're dragging the body around. But in the evening time, they will interestingly enough wake up when the rest of the group is going to bed. They're up on their phones like, hey, you know, let's play some old school Candy Crush or let's see who's on Facebook or whatever, right? In addition to that, they're gonna suffer typically from anxiety or depression. There'll be problems with sugar regulation. It'll be hard for them to regulate their sugar. Their, their blood sugar sometimes will drop and they'll become hypoglycemic. They'll feel dizzy. They'll feel sometimes almost agoraphobic where they feel uncomfortable in very large crowds or very large spaces. And the reason why is because the adrenal glands are the stress glands of the body and their ability to start or their ability to be able to handle stress and tolerate stress will become negatively affected. Viruses and other substances can get into the adrenal glands and alter adrenal function. So today is about how to detoxify the adrenal glands. Again, this is absolutely information that's gonna get you started. However, if you want the real in-depth stuff, check out the link below um, in the caption area and somewhere down there, there's a link that's gonna take you to the webinars that I'm doing. I do free webinars for you guys uh, every other week. So twice a month I do them. If we have an adrenal webinar coming up, definitely come and sign up for that. And if we don't, click on it and sign up for whatever webinar interests you that we're doing right now. So the first thing that we have to understand is the adrenal glands need a few things to detoxify. And in order to accomplish adrenal detoxification, we're gonna use a process called access displace, replace. What we're doing is we're accessing the adrenal glands. So we need to utilize some nutrients, nutritional supplementation, and food to access, to actually get into the adrenal glands. Then we have to displace the toxins that are in the adrenals, and then we have to replace those toxins with the nutrients that actually should be in the adrenal glands. So that's the process that we're gonna be using. So in order to access and displace some of these toxins from the adrenal glands, theoretically, what we need is whole foods, vitamin C, vitamin J, and vitamin P. That's what we utilize in our clinic, and that's what I've been doing for the last 26 years. But we're gonna use whole foods, vitamin C, P, and J, because the adrenal glands are the largest storage place for vitamin C in the body, glandularly speaking. The vitamin C and the adrenal glands are like this. They love each other. So we want to flood the system, flood the body with lots of whole food vitamin C as well as ascorbic acid. We don't want to use just ascorbic acid or ascorbate. And the reason why is in nature, that's not how vitamin C exists. 
In nature, vitamin C actually exists as a complex, vitamin C, P, and J. So we have bioflavonoids and other nutrients around the ascorbate or the ascorbic acid molecule. So we want to have a good balance of all of these because they work synergistically in the body. If you just load the body with only ascorbic acid and don't have any whole food balancers in there, what happens is you'll actually create deficiencies in the human bodies in vitamins P and J, which we don't want because we need those. So we want to get that whole food complex. Now, the best places to get it for the adrenal glands are not the ones with sugar. Sugar, vitamin C is bad. Like oranges, even though you know they're not super high in the glycemic index, there's still too much simple sugars and too much fructose for the body and it will overload the adrenal glands. The fructose overloads the liver. In some cases, it can increase inflammation for certain people, which then aggravates the adrenals because they're the anti-inflammatory glands. So we don't want to go there. We want to go other whole food sources. Like our fruits, our best, one of our best and simplest whole food fruit is the kiwi. So you soak them in a nice uh, baking soda bath, get rid of the toxins on the surface or any junk that might be on the surface, you know, rinse them off, of course, so there's no debris left with just clean water, and then eat the kiwi, the skin and all. Yes, the skin is edible, um, but this gives you like really the whole food complex. You get all the vitamin C, you get all the nutrients that are in the actual skin of the kiwi, which there are quite a lot. Some fruits actually have 10 times more nutrients in the rind, peel, and or skin than actually in the flesh. So we want to go ahead, if you could tolerate it, eat the skin. If not, skin it and then just eat the flesh and you're still good to go because that's loaded with vitamin C. In addition to that, we're going to look at things like broccoli, cabbage, red bell peppers, providing you don't have any major joint problems because uh, they do contain um, the basic toxin that's found in nightshades peppers, tomatoes, eggplants, so on and so forth. The nightshade vegetables, they are high in that alkaline toxin that can worsen joint conditions. So as long as you don't have any significant osteoarthritis or, or you're not bothered by the nightshades, then red bell peppers are awesome. So we want to eat this type of food multiple times per day. We want to make sure we're flooding our body at least three times a day for an eight week period. The adrenal detox protocol is an eight week period. And we wanna make sure we're flooding three times per day our body with a whole food vitamin C source. That could mean kiwi and A2 organic dairy, whatever it is, it could mean some eggs. And on the side, you have some sliced kiwi, or maybe you're doing some eggs and you cook your eggs and then you just do some raw bell peppers right in your scrambled eggs, right? Be creative. You can use broccoli in the same way. These are all great whole food sources of vitamin C. And we want to make sure we're having those multiple times throughout the day, about three, three times per day. That that accesses the adrenals. It starts the entry point because the adrenals naturally want to absorb vitamin C, P, J. So the vitamin C, as it starts to come into the adrenals and starts, it starts to push out some of the toxicity that is in the adrenals. That's the access displace portion of adrenal detoxification. Now, there's a whole other thing we need to do with supplementation, which I'm going to explain right now. So there are other nutrients that are going to help us access the adrenal glands and start to display some of those toxins. And these are the typical supportive adrenal nutrients. And these are very exact ratios. We've used these ratios in my clinic for years. So I do recommend these specific ratios. Okay, so the first thing is we want to do 55 milligrams of camu camu fruit powder. Camu camu root has 60 times more vitamin C than an orange. And the, the nutrients that are in camu camu are just wonderful for the adrenals and for this particular step. The next thing that we're going to incorporate is 75 milligrams, very specifically 75 milligrams of N-acetyltyrosine. N-acetyltyrosine is tyrosine, which is an amino acid that comes from proteins, but it has this little acetyl group attached to it. So we're like taking the amino acid tyrosine and we're attaching it to this acetyl group. And when we do that, it makes it much more potent. And that gets right into the adrenal glands and it actually aids the adrenals in their production of neurotransmitters. That's right, your adrenal glands actually make a group of neurotransmitters called catecholamines, which are things like epinephrine, norepinephrine, so on and so forth. The adrenal glands actually produce this, which helps us stay mentally sharp and focused, which is why some adrenal cases, they can have brain fog or they can search for words sometimes, or they can feel like they're backpedaling, right? 
it's because those neurotransmitters are not able to be produced in the adrenals in the quantity that they need, which negatively, of course, impacts brain function. So then we're going to do 100 milligrams of rhodiola. Rhodiola is an adaptogenic herb that supports adrenal function. Then we're going to do vitamin B6 in its active form called pyridoxal 5-phosphate. We want 5 milligrams of pyridoxal 5-phosphate or P5P, which is the active form of B6. We then want the following herbs in the following amounts. We want eleuthero, also known as Siberian ginseng, in the amount of 250 milligrams per day. We want ashwagandha, which can actually lower cortisol levels, taking stress off the adrenals, allowing them to heal, repair, and detoxify. We want that in the amount of 100 milligrams. We then want American ginseng, which is a potent tonic for the adrenals in the amount of 100 milligrams per day. And then we want licorice root in the amount of 10 milligrams per day. Lastly, we want 100 milligrams of ascorbic acid, actual ascorbic acid. Yes, we want that for adrenal detoxification. We're combining it with the whole food, Camu Camu, so they blend well together very nicely. We want 100 milligrams of that and 250 milligrams of vitamin B5. So we want to do all of those, that whole combination at breakfast, and we want to do that again at lunch. And then we want to make sure we're having the whole food vitamin C that I discussed. The combination of the nutrients from the supplementation as well as from the food is going to start the access displace process. We're going to now start to access and displace the toxins in the adrenal glands. And now we're going to remove them from the body and then replace. So the second part of the displacement set is we have to now raise one of the most powerful detoxifying um, antioxidants in the body, glutathione. And one of the ways we do that is simply by eating foods that raise our glutathione. And one of the easiest ways to raise glutathione is to have sulfur-rich foods, as well as foods high in selenium. So Brazil nuts are excellent. Eggs, pasture-raised organic eggs are also excellent. And it, that's for our selenium. For the sulfur, any of our cruciferous vegetables, kale, cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, bok choy, all of which have some degree of whole food vitamin C in them. When you eat them raw, if you eat them cooked, that increases the mineral content. So you actually have more available sulfur, but you have less, if any, vitamin C because the heat does damage and destroy. It degradates the actual ascorbate molecule. And then a great whole food herb. I mean, sprinkle this on everything. Sprinkle it on your eggs in the morning if you're making eggs, if you're going to do meat or if you're going to do fish or whatever you're going to do, try to incorporate parsley, as much either dry parsley or fresh parsley. And the reason why is that, that is going to push up your glutathione levels significantly. They activate a group of compounds called glutathione S transferase, which I won't get into the biochemistry of it because I'll put you all to sleep, but essentially it activates and makes all the glutathione in your body much more potent and may even help indirectly in your body making more glutathione. So this is a way now where we're accessing, we are displacing and moving out the toxins from the body. And we're going to replace that with all the nutrients in our good quality food. So all the foods I just mentioned, are going to provide nutrients, healing, and repair to the adrenal glands. And we also want some animal-based fats and proteins to now feed the adrenal some of the other nutrients that they need. Remember, these toxins like mercury and cadmium, they don't only damage the function of the adrenals, but they actually can damage the structure. That's what the study showed. So we need to replace with the proteins to repair the structural damage in the adrenals, as well as the fats. We need to get both of those, the proteins and the fats in there. So we can get those from pasture-raised organic eggs, from grass-fed organic beef. If you can do organs, there's also great ancestral blends of grass-fed organic bison that will have liver, heart, and skeletal muscle in them. If you are a vegan and you don't like that stuff, that's cool too. You can do it with uh, plant food. And one of the best plant sources is going to be hemp seeds, which is a complete protein from plant-based. In addition to that, it's very anti-inflammatory. And one serving of hemp seeds contains almost 50% of the recommended daily allowance or really daily intake 
for magnesium, which is also wonderful for adrenal health. So the other thing that's real great is our beans, like any kind of bean, kidney bean is probably your best bean for the adrenal. Think about the shape of it. It looks like a kidney and where do your adrenals sit? They sit right on top of your kidneys. So this is a basic adrenal detoxification. Now, again, I go into way more in depth, way more step-by-step -step in my adrenal detoxification webinar. Click on the link below, it's in the caption set. I don't know if we're doing an adrenal webinar right now, but I'm always running a webinar. I do webinars every other week. So we have a webinar running every other week. Um, so check and see if we're doing an adrenal. If not, sign up for the one we have or just wait for the adrenal webinar. And in there, I'll give you a tremendous amount of additional information. And again, I hope you like this information. If you did, please give me that thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button so you can hang out with me and definitely hit that notifications bell so you can get the reminders. And if you like today's information on adrenal healing and you want more information about helping your body heal, check out this stuff right here.